It's time for another state, and this is one that I've really been looking forward to redoing because last time I had to leave out a very particular piece that a lot of people from that state were bummed didn't make it in the final map, and I, I don't blame them at all. But now, since we're working with a much larger and more detailed reference map, uh, don't worry, it's gonna be included this time. Once again, it's just a really cool tree. Up today, it's the great state of Michigan, and I'm making it out of a piece of wood from the black cherry, Prunus serotina. Right off the bat, the thing to know about the black cherry tree is that the cherries that grow on it aren't the ones you're probably thinking of. Those big old round, plump cherries you know and love all come from cultivated varieties of either the sweet cherry, Prunus avium, or the sour cherry, Prunus sericus. And neither of those trees are native to North America at all. Same goes for the ever popular cherry blossom trees. The black cherry, or wild black cherry, is much more closely related to its fellow North American native, the choke cherry, Prunus virginiana. So what makes this tree different from the famous non-native cultivated cherries? Well, lots. The black cherry is a medium to large size fast growing tree native to much of the eastern half of the US as well as large portions of Mexico and parts of the southwest. It's a tree that does well in a variety of habitats appearing as scrubby bushes all the way up to tall trees and it's found natively throughout the state of Michigan. You'll find it on fence rows, borders of fields and forests, rocky ground, and dry open jack pine or aspen savannas. For the first 10 years of the tree's life, its bark is thin and smooth, resembling birch bark, while mature trees have this thick, broken bark. Its leaves are long and shiny and can sometimes smell of almonds when crushed, hinting at their toxicity as they contain certain compounds that can be converted into cyanide. In fact, the black cherry has been known to cause significant illness among livestock, especially if they eat too many of the wilted leaves. Black cherry blossoms grow in these really neat clusters, marking another significant difference between it and its more famous relatives, whose blossoms get a lot more press, but these ones are great too. Those flowers then give rise to red to black colored cherries, which are small, about the size of a pea, and also hang in those characteristic clusters. More on those cherries in a minute because I'm gonna be baking soon, but first let's talk about black cherry wood while I use some of it to make a plate. Now this is a tree that's prized for its wood. Pretty much any lumber you see listed as cherry wood comes from the black cherry tree. It's considered one of America's prized domestic hardwoods, particularly for use in cabinet making. It's renowned for its exceptional workability, its straight grain, and its rich red color, which darkens and becomes even richer as the wood ages. And that's something I'm really looking forward to with that final state piece when we get it up on the board. All right, so this plate was kind of a fun experiment. I wanted to preserve the live edge on the piece of wood here, so I thought I might try something super different, and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. And also, I have to agree, this wood is a real delight to work with. And if I'm gonna be serving up this dessert on a cherry wood plate, I may as well make a cherry wood fork while I'm at it. Now, the fruit of the black cherry tree is edible, and it's a traditional food among many indigenous tribes, given the tree's wide range. The tree also has a host of traditional medicinal uses, especially the inner bark, which can be used to treat coughs and make sedatives and tonics. 
Today, wild black cherries aren't really something that are commercially available, as the fruit of the sweet and sour cherry trees are far more popular. And if you see something listed as black cherry, it's almost certainly gonna be a variety of the fruit from the sweet cherry tree, unless it's explicitly listed as wild black cherry. But within the tree's native range, it's often used to make jellies, jams, pies, and flavorings for drinks and syrups. Historically, it was also a popular option to add a little extra flavor to rum and brandy, which led to the fruit sometimes being called rum cherry. Now, I tried real hard to find some wild black cherries or jam, syrup, just, just anything for this video, but this time of year and this far away from the tree's native range, we're just gonna have to cheat a bit and use some sweet cherries to make a dish called a cherry clafouti. And you know what? I've been enjoying a backyard fire today, so let's do it outside in a Dutch oven. I'm gonna follow a recipe from Alton Brown, starting with buttering a Dutch oven and lining it with some thawed frozen cherries. Now whisk two large eggs and a quarter cup of sugar until light and foamy. Then add a half cup whole milk, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and I'm gonna improvise a bit by adding a little over a teaspoon of almond extract as well. Then add a half cup flour and whisk to combine. Then just pour the batter over the cherries. Now just toss the lid on and take it outside to put on top of some prepared charcoal briquettes. Adding some more on top and letting it cook out there for about 25 minutes. And while it does, this feels like a good time to put our completed black cherry Michigan up on the board. And I really like how this one looks. The cherry wood is gorgeous. I love the look of that grain. And the color is only gonna get better over time. So that'll be a lot of fun. Also on the official state tree map, I wasn't able to add Isle Royale and a lot of people were really unhappy about that. So it feels good to rectify that with this larger, more detailed version. Time to check on our Clafuti and oh boy. All right, so here's what I think happened. For one thing, the recipe calls for a five quart Dutch oven. And for whatever reason, I thought mine was a lot larger than that. So I doubled the recipe and it turns out I did have a five quart Dutch oven. So we just had too much mix in there. Also, I had a rip roaring fire going before I added the charcoal briquettes. And I think we, we just had too much heat in there. So time for attempt number two with the right quantities this time and a lot fewer coals. Now the recipe says that after 25 minutes, you take the lid off and let it cook for another five minutes, but that didn't really do much for me. So I brought it in and let it broil in the oven for a bit to give it a nice golden brown top. Generously dust with powdered sugar. And now it's time to serve it up on our beautiful cherry wood plate and tuck in. And I'll say, this is really tasty. Even if I do wish I'd been able to try something with some actual wild black cherries, maybe another time. But for now, make sure to like and subscribe to watch the rest of the map come together. And let me know in the comments if you've got any good wild black cherry recipes. And of course, tell me which state you'd like to see next.